about the only thing that's certain these days is uncertainty. At the University of St. Thomas, student athletes, coaches, and administrators have gotten used to instability over the past few years. Whether it's practicing within the parameters of a global pandemic, or simply figuring out the direction of the athletic program as a whole. I was a student athlete here in the early 90s. Uh, many of our coaches were student athletes here. Obviously our student athletes matriculated here because they wanted to compete in the MIAC conference. The MIAC, otherwise known as the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, has been the home of St. Thomas Athletics for nearly a century. As one of its founding members, the Tommies have been one of the most successful Division III programs in the country. But for some, they were a little too successful. I'm in a weird situation where three of my former players are head coaches in the conference. So one of them came up to me and said, hey, like, what are you going to do? And I asked, about what? Well, I, they're going to vote you out of the MIAC. And I was like, no way, that's not happening. Like, we were a founding member. We love it in the MIAC. Like, why would they kick us out? The official reason was cited as athletic competitive parity. But nevertheless, in May 2019, St. Thomas was involuntarily removed from the conference. I grew up five minutes from here. I came to St. Thomas games with my dad when I was six years old. And so this is a university that is near and dear to my heart. And certainly the Mayak has been a big part of our history. So uh, it was certainly a little surprising. It was disappointing, quite honestly. I'd say that the sentiment for a lot of us was kind of sadness. The lingering melancholy quickly turned to decisive action. With only two years before St. Thomas would no longer be part of the MIAC, the program was forced to find a different path in a hurry. You don't have control of it, so you look at, okay, what's our next step, and where do we go, and how do we make it ours? There was some talk of the WIAC, and there's some talk of NSIC, and then there was, you know, kind of the whole gamut was on the board for us. Just a few months later, that gambit turned into a gamble. Tom Dupel, commissioner of the Summit League in Division I, approached the school with an unprecedented idea. When you hear from a Division I commissioner who may be interested in your school as a member, an expanded member of their conference, you start to think that there's some value that we have uh, that we could offer to that league. And as we had further conversations with Tom, uh, Commissioner Dupel, uh, as well as a couple of people at the NCAA, we learned that there might be a path for us to try to move directly from Division Three to Division I. And when we felt like that might be a real opportunity, uh, we focused on what that might look like for us. The leap from Division Three to Division I has rarely been attempted. NCAA bylaws require a 12-year wait between those divisions with a mandatory stopover in Division II, unless there are extenuating circumstances. St. Thomas's situation seemed to qualify. It was a lot of collecting data, um, putting together what I'd say is a marketing uh, piece on behalf of the university and really trying to make a compelling story, tell a compelling story about St. Thomas and why we think that we'd be a great fit for the Summit League and for Division One. What's that value proposition that we can bring to the league? In the fall of 2019, the first hurdle was cleared when the presidents of the Summit League invited St. Thomas to join the conference. A waiver was then applied for on the school's behalf to allow the Tommies to move up immediately. And finally, after numerous delays, the NCAA Division I Council approved the waiver in July 2020. I don't know that there are words to express the level of excitement that we, that we felt at that particular time. I think it's good for the conference uh, to have a presence here in St. Paul, but it was also good for us in that we can really expand our name around the country. So I think it made a lot of sense on both sides. It provided sort of a clarity in knowing that there's an incredible amount of work ahead but also knowing a direction that, uh, that is now set. A day or two into it, you start thinking about the real transition that has to happen and the real work that has to happen. Over the past several months, coaches and administrators at St. Thomas have been getting up to speed on everything from recruiting compliance to financial aid. There's gonna be a learning curve for sure, but it's gonna be one that's, uh, we're gonna meet with open arms and, and we're definitely gonna try our best, but I, there's going to be a little failure along the way, I'm sure. It's a lot more work and a lot more um, just logistics you sort of have to navigate. So, um, I mean, again, we'll, we'll get the hang of it. It'll, it'll be kind of, you know, old hat real soon here for us. But, um, you know, I say eye-opening is probably pretty accurate. The whole thing is a journey, right? You just learn, you adapt, you learn. Administrative tasks are one thing, but on the quarter field, it'll be a whole new ball game. 
the athletic profile will have to change for us, and that, there's no doubt about that. In recruiting, um, you have to turn that page fairly quickly, where now you're really only looking at guys that you think can help you in the Summit League as opposed to, um, you know, obviously Division Three. We're going to have to study the game from a different level. We're going to have to study the game in, in different areas, but we'll adjust with that. When the 2021-2022 academic year rolls around, it's game on for St. Thomas and the Summit League. The transition period means they won't be eligible for postseason play until 2025. And the growing pains from a competition standpoint will certainly be evident over the next four years. But after the Tommy's winning ways were seemingly punished just a few years ago, the program is now on course toward a victorious acceptance. Excitement can be around growth, it can be around success, it can be around learning, and I think we're going to have a huge dose of all those things. We're not going to see immediate success in all of our competitive venues the way that we have seen that kind of success um, over the last decade or so. Uh, one of the things that I've talked with all of them about is let's not take shortcuts though. Let's make sure that we build this for the long term. In partnering with the Summit League, I think it's a great opportunity for us to really be able to grow and extend and, and find out, you know, just this next step. You know, a lot of people are like, you know, it's going to be bumpy. I said, yeah, but it's probably going to be one of those decisions that you look back and you're like, that was the best thing that happened to us. And here is David Brown with a little bit more on this story. All right, Brownie, the Summer League doesn't have football, doesn't have hockey. St. Thomas does. What happens with those programs? Obviously, most of their programs are moving to the Summit League, but the football program will be part of the Pioneer League and FCS. Men's hockey will be in the CCHA Central Collegiate Hockey Association. Women's hockey will be part of the WCHA Western Collegiate Hockey Association. The NCAA they actually changed the rules a few years back. You can't move just certain programs to D1, stay in D2 or D3. It has to be all or nothing. But as we saw in the story, most of the programs for St. Thomas will be members of the Summit League. All right. And money is always a big factor. Yep. So it's a huge leap money-wise in all of this as well. How does St. Thomas go about handling that? Well, one of the major selling points for St. Thomas was they have a pretty big endowment north of $500 million. Obviously, not all of that is going to be marketed toward athletics. But what that figure tells people is that they have a strong alumni base. So like any school, they're going to rely on donations from alumni, ticket sales, merchandise sales, sponsorships, all the usual factors that go into funding an athletic program. But that financial health was one of the main reasons that St. Thomas was able to make this move. All right, yeah, good for the school, great for the Summit League. Absolutely, they get into that Twin Cities market, which is what they've wanted, the Summit League. Thanks a lot, David Brown.